Research and Development of Shackley Corporation. He has a PhD from Cornell University, a BA from University of, of Virginia. I mean, two pages of his bio goes. In publications, patents, and goes on and on. And what it means is he's responsible for all the unconditional money-back guarantee on all Shackley products. <laughs> now that's the important description right there, Dr. Dagny. When I first met him, he's reasonably new to our Shackley team. When I first met him, uh, actually at the conference, I told him he would be the first male speaker we have ever had at our woman to woman. He said he was raised with three sisters, would fit in very well, and kiddingly I said, well, do you mind wearing a wig? <laughs> Only I would have said that, you know that. But he looked at me and he said, not at all, and do you want me to bring my guitar to play? <laughs> so I knew that we, you know, he's famous all over the world. He's one of the top scientists anywhere. So when I heard he would wear a wig and play a guitar for us, I met the first scientist that I knew was really a genius. So let's welcome Dr. Dax. But, you know, I did wonder, you know, I, I'm one X chromosome short of a pair, uh, you know, to be speaking at a woman-to-woman -woman event. And I, I, so I did, I did kind of wonder, uh, you know, do I fit in? But, uh, you know, the truth is, uh, and all the men in the room know this, right? We, we are what we are to the extent that we're good because of the women around us. And I could, you know, some of you have met my wife, Anne, my lovely wife, Anne. She would still say that I'm work in progress, you know, a lot of secret. But uh, I tell you, this morning at, at 4 a.m., I'm getting up to catch the plane. She was up, making me a cup of tea, finding my glasses, kissing me goodbye. I got a good one, and I, I'm never going to forget that. Um, and, and, and I was substantially raised by three sisters. I had two older sisters, one who was... Uh, sufficiently older that I thought of her as my second mother, and then one sister who was much younger, who I, I call my practice daughter. And, uh, you know, they had a, a tremendous positive effect on me. But I'd like to mention a couple other people in terms of why I, I think I can be at a woman-to-woman -woman event. And that's uh, this, this pair here. On the left, that's my English mother, Edith, uh, holding her a cup of tea. Uh, my parents met in London. My father was in the U.S. Army during World War II, and he met this lovely young English uh, lady uh, walking through Kew Gardens. And uh, they got married and, and had their first daughter uh, when the rockets were still uh, hitting London. And uh, my mother was such a positive influence. She, she taught us all to appreciate education. Uh, I have some of my earliest memories of her taking me to the public library. Uh, she taught us the value of a, an honest day's work. And uh, when she came to America, she loved this country. And she became an American citizen. But there were two things when she got here that she just couldn't understand. One was segregation, because we, we were in Virginia, we were in the Old South, and she just could not understand that. And thank goodness we're, we're past that era now. The other was uh, our waste. You know, in England, England, she grew up in the Depression and World War II. They wasted nothing. They reused, they recycled, they, they took care of everything. They had their victory gardens, their home gardens. And she came here, and you know, the United States was at the peak of its economic power after the war, and just she couldn't believe everything that we had or how much we threw away. So she was the first environmentalist I knew. Uh, <laughs> She was, she was that crazy foreign lady who was calling Newport News City Council saying, why don't we have a municipal uh, compost pile? And we were, I'm sure, the first family on the block to be recycling our glass and aluminum and, and everything else. So she also taught me a lot about uh, 
taking care of uh, Mother Earth. Now the, the little person uh, next to her is one of her granddaughters, my daughter Rachel. So this picture is taken 25 years ago, almost exactly, 25 years ago today. And again, men in the room, how many of you uh, feel like you actually grew up when you had a child, right? Uh, there's, there's something uh, maturing about realizing you have that responsibility. And uh, two weeks ago, I had the pleasure of uh, being with my daughter. Ah. <laughs> oh, I can drive, I can drive. She got her master's degree. Her master's degree from the University of Texas. Very, very tired. Dr. Daggy here on the left of, uh, I don't know, 40 hours of no sleep. But um, I, I just, I wanted a daughter. I really wanted a daughter because I knew, I wanted her to, to know that she could do anything. She could do anything. And at 25 years old, she has worked in Brussels, Washington, Cairo, Manila, Japan, and Austin, Texas. <laughs> Speaks multiple languages and, and is doing some great work right now. She's uh, she's managing a project to uh, to save the Lower Rio Grande River. So uh, just uh, you know, two of the two of the women in my life who've uh, made me what I am today. And I want to mention one more that's closer to home with, in terms of Shackley, and that's uh, this great lady, Adrienne Bendich, uh, world-renowned nutritionist, whom I had the pleasure of hiring uh, to work for me in uh, 1997. She's uh, authored a whole series of books on preventive nutrition. Uh, tremendous scientist. I learned a lot from working with her. I'm not Jewish, but she's my Jewish grandmother. Uh, I, I, I call her very fondly, a dear, dear friend of mine. And when I was considering coming to Shackley, of course, Roger is very persuasive, but you know, I had to do my own homework, and I'm on the website and looking at the products and saying, this all looks good. But let me, let me get a few opinions from people in the field and, and see what they have to say about Shackley. So one of the first people I called was Adrian, And we're just having a conversation, we're catching up, and I, she doesn't know I'm you know, considering this move. And I say, Adrian, just, just curious, have you ever heard of a company called Shackley? Now, Adrian grew up in Brooklyn. She's got that kind of Brooklyn talk. So she was all, almost like a feel over the phone line. I was being slapped in the head. Of course I've heard about Shackley. <laughs> <laughs> they make the best supplements. And she said, and then immediately she said, and you know what else? I know a lot of women who have been helped, who have reached financial security because of Shackley. So I thought, wow, that's, that's pretty good. That's a really nice endorsement from somebody that I had the deepest respect for. So uh, just three of the many women uh, who've had a, a, a great impact in my life. And then coming to Shackley, you know, I had the opportunity to do a lot of reading of, of what Dr. Shackley himself had written, his philosophy. It was kind of scary. I mean, you, some of you have seen the picture, you know, older Dr. Shackley with Dr. Bruce, and there's some physical similarity there, too. It's a little uncanny. Uh, but, um, you know, the, what, as I read what, what he wrote 50 or more years ago, I thought, that's, that's what I've been saying. That's what I've been saying. He, he was way ahead of his time, and it's, it's tragic in a way that he, he still lives. You know, we still have this schism where, uh, as, as Wendell Berry said, we, we've, got a, we've got a food industry that doesn't think about health, and we've got a health industry that doesn't think about food. You know, that's, that's really the problem. That's really the problem. Those two things, those two disconnects. And, and here was a guy saying, we have this opportunity to, to have a different paradigm, to build health and wellness instead of treating disease. And that, that slide that Carolyn showed, all the, all the drugs, I have friends like that. Friends younger than me who are taking a fistful of drugs every day and sometimes definitely being harmed by it. And other times you just don't know, right? If you have to take medicine, fine, take medicine. But we need we need to come to a to a new arrangement where people put nutrition and lifestyle uh, a little bit uh, more seriously in, into the paradigm. And uh, again, Dr. Shackley, that's where he was. So I, that's what that's what I'm looking for. I'm I'm looking for a healthcare system that's really designed to help keep you well. I think I've, I've told some of you. I now have a doctor. That I'm working with in, in the, from that.
that perspective where we'll draw more blood samples and we will measure more things and he's going to help me understand my risk. That I appreciate from our healthcare system. I don't want him to say, oh, I see you're broken now. Let me, let me come prescribe something. I want him to say, let's understand what your risks are and let's do something about it. And we can do that. We know we can do that. We know that a lot of the problems we face today are, are secondary to lifestyle choices and that they're preventable. I've done a lot of work uh, in obesity in recent years, but, be, but also in type 2 diabetes. And there's about 10% of the US adult population now has type 2 diabetes. It should be close to 0%, because almost all that is preventable. Almost all of it is preventable. It's, it's secondary to, to diet and weight and sedentary lifestyle, and we can, we can do something about it. I was talking to Alan on the way in about people that he's counseled who have gotten off their medications because they've made the changes that they need to make. And especially if you catch it early, that's, that's very possible to do. So I, I want to talk a little bit more. You're going to have seen some of these slides before if you've seen me, seen me do these talks, but I'm going to always throw in some new elements, so I hope you're not bored if you have heard it before. Uh, it's very important, these three pillars of the Shackley difference, and we start with always safe. We want our products to always be safe. And that's a, that's a huge challenge in the world today as you know, there's deliberate adulteration and unintentional adulteration, contaminants that appear in products. Um, and, and simply you know, knowing, knowing enough to know how to do it. Uh, we have a great team uh, in R&D that I, I have the pleasure of leading both in, in Pleasanton and Neural Labs in Hayward, California. Uh, we have scientists of many different stripes. There are nutritional biochemists like me. There's Dr. Jamie, medical doctor. Uh, there's analytical chemists who are running a lot of our, our tests or managing tests at outside labs. We have microbiologists, we have toxicologists. We have our regulatory specialists. We all work together uh, and we set the specifications. We have the expertise within house that we can design products that are safe. We work with our suppliers to make sure that they're selling us good materials, but we don't we don't just take their word for it. We also test. The, the, the story I may be able to talk about a little more when we get to uh, to Long Beach, but we are we are sourcing a new ingredient for a product that we have in development, and we buy three batches, three separate lots, so that we can test them analytically. Are they what they say they are? And are there any contaminants in there? And the first two lots were perfect, absolutely perfect. So we were very confident. The third lot comes in, and we detected a pesticide that really shouldn't have been there. Uh, it was uh, both from the, the country of origin, which is in South America, and in this country, this is a pesticide that shouldn't even be there anymore. Uh, and probably it was representing some environmental contamination. These, these pesticides stay in the environment for a long time and break down very slowly, and they can still get into our, into our food supply, into our food ingredients. And it was at a very low level, and we could have argued that it's not really a safety problem. Other companies were gonna buy this exact same lot and were gonna sell it, but we looked at it and said, no, that's not consistent with our policy. We will not accept that lot. And we went back to the supplier and we said, you need to understand, you've got a problem here. You need to understand, uh, we, wanna, we wanna know where how this contaminant got in and what you can do to address it because we'd like to work with you but we need to know that you can deliver stuff that's clean well they sent us another batch we tested every which way from sunday and it was perfect so we've now got three out of four and we're going to continue to monitor that situation and make sure that we can deliver a raw material into a product where we have to live. a lot of companies would not even have done the test or if they'd done the test, they would have done a less sensitive test, they wouldn't have seen anything, or if they'd seen something, they would have said it doesn't matter. That's not how we roll. And that's that's important. We really, we really want to protect our reputation, right? That's the most valuable thing we have. So with, we will sometimes be in a situation, you know what's happened, where we've had to stop selling either temporarily or, or sometimes forever. Again, we were talking about a product this morning that we, we had to take away a while ago we could no longer source a raw material that's clean. That's really important to us. We, we don't like to do that, but, but it's better than the alternative. 
Always works is another great one, um, and you you know you've heard some some stories this morning. Um, I I love Letitia's example of talking about it in the community, and, and um, you know it's one of the things we know about nutrition uh, is how important it is to immune function. In classic nutrition, one of the ways that that nutritional deficiencies were diagnosed was if the immune system wasn't responding. Your immune system cannot work if it doesn't have all the raw materials it needs, all the vitamins and minerals and protein uh, that are there so that the engine of your immune system can actually operate. Uh, so if you just flip that argument, okay, if my, if my immune system's not working, it's a sign of malnutrition. Therefore, if I make sure I have adequate nutrition, my immune system will work better. And it's absolutely true. And um, you know, it's just one of many examples. You, Dr. Shackley said, you know, give your body the tools that it needs. It has an amazing ability to repair and maintain itself if you only do that. And many of us have subclinical malnutrition if we're not supplementing. So we we made our products available uh, for testing. I'm really excited. Just yesterday, uh, we got some additional results back on the telomere study that you've been hearing about for so long. We're finally going to get an abstract submitted uh, uh, for the, the first uh, phase of that study, and it's going to show that the Shackley group in that study had longer telomeres, which suggests that their cells are younger, uh, particularly above the age of 60. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Um, we also, uh, on Friday, got back results of another study, uh, which I will be talking about in uh, Long Beach. Um, so we're, we're continuing to support uh, scientific research and, again, uh, an indication of the faith that we have in the quality of our products, that we will make our products available. We'll even make matching placebos if, if investigators ask us. We'll, we'll hand them over and say, you, you know, if you're qualified, you have a good idea, we'll let you do it. And, uh, and we'll live with the, with the results. And Carolyn already mentioned, you know, some of the other kinds of endorsements we get for our products, uh, the number of uh, Olympic athletes and, and extreme adventures, including uh, NASA, is another great testament to the, uh, to the third party uh, endorsement of what we're doing. We talk a lot about the landmark study, and again, those of you who have heard me talk recently will have seen some of these slides, but I think this is very important because this study is you know, there are questions that you see in the press all the time or see on the internet about is supplementation safe? There's a huge number of articles uh, in the last few months, you know, saying you're just throwing your money away if you're taking supplements. There were, uh, uh, reported a terrible, terrible study last summer uh, saying to men, don't take omega-3 because it'll give you prostate cancer. Absolute rubbish, absolute rubbish. Uh, the worst possible advice uh, you could give. And um, so we, we stand behind our products, and when this study was done in uh, long-term Shackley users, 20-plus year Shackley users, to really answer that question, safety and efficacy. What, is, what, what does supplementation do? Uh, performed, a study performed at University of California at Berkeley, and I look at it first as a safety study. You know, almost 300 Shackley users for 20-plus years if taking Shackley supplements anyway wasn't good for you, you'd see it, right? After 20 years of somebody, you know, typical Shackley person taking not one, not two, not three, but a whole lot of supplements on a regular uh, basis. So that's, that's important again, safety first. But then to look at, at efficacy in multiple ways, look at it from the standpoint of where the markers of nutritional status improve, where the markers of disease risk improve, was there actually an improvement in, in disease prevalence, which is a really, really tough hurdle to hit for any therapy, including prescription drugs, and finally self-assessed health. And we had the Shackley group compared to a, to a US government national database called NHANES, where people either weren't taking any supplement or they were just taking somebody else's multi. And again, the Shackley group, I've just got the women's data here, women's group, women's data, but people were taking a whole raft of, of Shackley supplements, so, you know, starting uh, with vitamin E, B complex, vitamin C, vitamin E, and so forth. Uh, down the list, you can read it. But this was a, uh, a a group of dedicated supplement users for sure. 
And when we look at in terms of their uh, nutritional status, uh, these are, across the bottom, these are uh, uh, vitamins and in one case the minerals. So we have one of the B vitamins, folate, retinol, which is a form of vitamin A, beta carotene, another form of vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, and iron, this is in women, that's what the F means. And the black bars are unsupplemented, the red bar is somebody else's multi, and the green bar is a Shackley group. And to get them all on one page, I've normalized it all, so whatever the, whatever the reading was in the unsupplemented group, I put it 100%. So you want to see supplementation taking the numbers higher, and in fact you do across the board, even retinol, which where there's not a big uh, change, is still statistically significant versus the unsupplemented group, and the others are all very, very, very statistically significant. So, you know, not surprising, supplementation, you would expect to see an effect, good that we do see an effect, and again, many of these micronutrients we have uh, people in this country and around the world who are deficient, so this matters to bring the nutritional status up. And we see that when we look at markers of risk. Now these, these data are presented in, in another way. These are called odds ratios. So you want the numbers to go down. And if the, if the odds ratio goes from 1 to 0.5, you cut the risk of something in half. If it goes from 1 to 0.25, you cut it by 75%. So it's like golf, you want low scores here when the number's going down. And across the bottom, we have a marker of inflammation, C-reactive protein. So your risk of having elevated C-reactive protein went down so much on Shackley that nobody had it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, I, I saw that, I was like shaking my head, I couldn't believe it. Uh, this is your risk of having low HDL cholesterol. HDL is the good cholesterol. So that's cut about in half. The one, one multivitamin group did pretty well, but not as well as the Shackley group. Third set is the risk of having high triglycerides, which is a cardiovascular risk, cut by more than 50% in the Shackley group. Fourth one is the risk of having a bad ratio of total cholesterol to HDL. You want your total cholesterol not to be too high. You want your HDL, the good cholesterol, to be high. So you want that ratio to be low. What's your risk of having a high ratio <coughs> cut by about half on the back of the group? And the last one is homocysteine. At the time of the paper, the thinking about high elevated homocysteine is that it was probably bad for your heart. That's more controversial now, but there's more and more data about it being bad for your brain. So take your pick. But uh, that's reduced about 90% in the Shackley group. So, Tremendous improvement in risk factors across the board. Very nice to see. And then they, they really did the, the hard hurdle. You know, was the risk, actually risk of prevalence of disease lowered uh, with the supplementation? Now, uh, you, some of you probably heard Dr. Steve Cheney talk, and, and he, one of the points he's made in his talks and, and in, his, uh, in his blog is that even the statin drugs, you know, the super powerful drugs that all the doctors are putting all the people on, which lower cholesterol tremendously, in what's called primary prevention, where you don't know that you, 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 you don't, you're not diagnosed as having heart disease, but they're putting you on a statin because your cholesterol's high. Even with a statin drug, with the powerful effect it has on cholesterol, they haven't been able to show that it works in primary prevention. It will not necessarily decrease your risk of heart disease. You're taking powerful medication to protect your heart, and they have not been able to show that that works. But in the Shackley group versus the unsupplemented group, risk of high blood pressure, prevalence of high blood pressure was down 39%. Diabetes, amazing, 73%. This blows me away. Again, 10% of the U.S. adult population, roughly, has type 2 diabetes. Think about the health consequences of that and just the human misery that that's going to cause. 73% reduction. Coronary heart disease, this is diagnosed coronary heart disease, didn't reach statistical significance, but it was cut in half. We, we, if we had a larger sample size, probably would have reached statistical significance. Uh, actual having had a heart attack, again, down about half. Uh, presence of angina, down by almost 60%. So we, all, all five of these are measures of heart health. That's how I think about it. Diabetes greatly, if you have type 2 diabetes, it greatly increases your risk of heart disease. High blood pressure goes without saying. Coronary heart disease, heart attack, angina. So there are five separate measures of heart health here. Two of them reach statistical significance. Three of them uh, trending strongly in the right direction. So you can make your own judgment. 
I would say, on, on balance, the argument's pretty good that supplementation was good for the heart. And, and lastly, just self-reported uh, low health status. That, that self-diagnosis, much less likely to happen in the Shackley group than in, in the control. So uh, I like to say, think like a detective. Um, you know, you have to judge. When you're in science, you have to look at the totality of the evidence and make a judgment. The, the story is rarely completely um, obvious, right? There will always be some studies that go in a different direction, uh, some findings you can't quite explain. But you look at the totality of the evidence and you have to make a judgment. So you can make your own judgment. I read this paper and I, I turned to my wife and I said, we're not supplementing enough. You know, we're not supplementing enough. Because it really, to me, it makes a pretty compelling argument when so many things move in the right direction. And I presented this study to my colleagues at Florida State. I'm still an adjunct professor in my spare time. And I, and I asked them, I asked them the question. I said, I want you to go out and find 300 people in a row and it, it's in Florida, so that would have helped them a little bit. But 300 people in a row that didn't have low vitamin D status, because nobody in the Shackley group had low vitamin D status. And that's off, off the charts, unlikely to happen by chance, right? It's got to be the supplementation. So I invited them to step outside and try to pick 300 people in a row off the street that didn't have low vitamin D. And of course, they know that's impossible because they're professors of nutrition. I said, then the same 300 people, let's make sure that none of them have elevated C-reactive protein. Well, that's not going to happen either. You put those two things together, you add in all the other measures, it doesn't happen by chance. It just doesn't happen by chance. It's got to be the supplementation. Or you come up with another explanation because I don't have one. And I, I studied this a lot. So, um, so I, I look at this as, as pretty convincing evidence, at least in the case of Shackley supplements, that they're safe and that they're effective. And you've seen this lovely picture all, all, also already. So we, you know, we took the learnings of that study and we said, let's, let's try to make this uh, as easy as possible. And so we have the, the wonderful vitalizer strip that Ann and I uh, take every morning. And, um, you know, we, we have these choices to make. I, I took this part of this quote from uh, Leslie Huff that some of you know, Leslie and Steve, are actually in Paris right now on a Shackley trip which is not the worst possible place to be spending a, a weekend, I suppose. But uh, anyway, you know, she and her husband were, were really, their health was suffering, and they, they were having a breakfast of coffee and cigarettes and Danish, and kind of wondering why they didn't feel so good. And, uh, and she described it as survival mode, and now they start their days with a Shackley 180 smoothie and with their vitalizer, and, and they, they look feel much better. They have much better energy levels and they're, and they're living their lives to the fullest. And that's what we want. That's what we want, right? You can make that choice. And again, that's, that's what Ann and I do. Uh, this is a picture of Vitalizer Men. Apologies for that. We actually take Vitalizer Gold. Uh, and we, we, have it, uh, we, we have it with a, uh, what we make a green smoothie uh, with a Shackley 180 base. And we've kind of gone through all the flavors. and. Uh, came up with this thing I call the, uh, the smoothie generator. These aren't recipes, but just kind of thinking broadly about what ingredients could you put into a smoothie to you know, use whatever is fresh and in season. And um, again, we have a blender that'll chop ice, it'll chop anything. So I even put cholesterol reduction complex into it. I put lecithin into it, I put alfalfa into it. We you know, put all kinds of things in there. Uh, we tend to use, um, soy, vanilla soy, and uh, water and ice, so we're not adding the calories from, from the milk and the sugar from the milk. We're replacing the milk protein with, uh, with protein from the vegetables. We're replacing the milk sugars with sugar from the fruit. Uh, I'd love to put in uh, blanched broccoli, uh, raw zucchini works amazingly well, makes it very creamy. Ginger root, hot peppers in the morning, gets you going. And then, uh, so we, we have this, uh, you know, with a lot of water, so getting hydrated, starting to get hydrated, then I get on my bicycle, I go to work and I have a shack of green tea. And it's just a great way to start the day. I, I can't tell you how much better I feel with that kind of breakfast than anything else. And in fact, sometimes we'll, we'll have one for dinner. Um, uh, we, we hate to miss it. <laughs> uh, so tonight, I'm guessing, well, that's probably because I didn't have one at four o'clock this morning, uh, we'll probably uh, have one of these uh, for dinner. And uh, this, by the way, uh, there are two other pages behind it. 
of suggestions how to do this. If anybody would like a copy, happy to send a slide. Um, and then, uh, you know, we've also, we've made Vivix uh, part of our routine. Uh, I think of Vivix a lot the same way I think of Vitalizer. Vitalizer is kind of not targeting any particular problem. It's like Dr. Shackley said, it's giving your body all the tools it needs to do the maintenance. And Vivix, I, I think of, I, you know, some people I'm sure take it for a particular concern, but I just think of it as uh, protecting yourself, protecting, you know, kind of in a unilateral uh, and, and uh, all, uh, unilateral way uh, the health of your cells. And, you know, we recognize that people appear to age at different rates. That's, that's what it says on your driver's license, right? That, that's one measure of how old you are, but but some people at 80 seem young and some people at 50 seem old, right? And you know, what is that? And I, I think a lot of it is diet and lifestyle. Of course, there's a genetic component as well. But, but there's what we're exposed to in the environment and, and uh, how, we, how we live and how, how much we, uh, we stay active and so forth. So your, your cellular age can be accelerated or slowed down by these kinds of choices or factors. And uh, I heard a wonderful talk uh, by a, a professor who studied this phenomenon of aging, and she pointed out that the diseases that we associate with aging all tend to have a very low incidence until about the age of 50, and then they tend to go up exponentially. Not all at quite the same steepness of slope, but all this kind of hockey stick curve. You know, so if you think about you know, heart disease, dementia, osteoarthritis, uh, uh, loss of vision, loss of hearing, you know, whatever, all these, these conditions we associate with age. And yeah, pretty much until about age 50, we're fine, and then you start, start hearing about it, seeing it in your family and friends, so feeling it for yourself. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the curves are all the same and they're all starting at about the same point in time suggested to many researchers <laughs> that there was one common underlying mechanism behind all that. And the mechanism is cellular aging, because as we live, and not starting at 50, starting at birth or even before birth, our cells are being assaulted by, by radiation, by pollution, just by the act, of, the act of living itself, by things in our diet. And that damage accumulates. Some of it's damaged to the DNA, some is protein, mitochondrial damage. There are about a half a dozen well-understood mechanisms at this point. And so Vivix was really designed and is being tested for its ability to interfere with these uh, mechanisms of cellular damage to actually either prevent the damage or to, to help the cells in repair. And we have this one example from a clinical trial uh, this, that I'm sure many of you have heard of, the study of a response to a, to a bad meal, uh, basically a McDonald's breakfast meal, right? High fat, high, high sugar, low fiber, uh, typical American meal, and just one serving of Vivix blunting a, a measure of oxidative damage in, in response to that meal, completely blunting it. The placebo group, you see the oxidative damage.